In today's video, I am going to talk about sliding window rate limiter. Rate limiter is a mechanism for limiting the number of requests that can be made to a particular API. And it can be very useful for SaaS applications where the products are monetized usually based on the number of requests allowed for a particular time window. I have covered in details about API rate limiter in my last couple of videos and I'll share the link to those videos in the description below. In this video, I'm going to mainly focus on sliding window rate limiter and also I'll cover the callback event which usually occurs when a rate limit gets triggered. And it is true for all type of rate limiter, not just for sliding window rate limiter. So a sliding window rate limiter is very similar to fixed window rate limiter, but the difference is it adds a number of segments within a window. So for example, if you consider that we added a window of 10 seconds and we said we are going to allow 10 requests for that window, which is 10 requests per 10 seconds, now we can add an extra concept of segment on that 10 second and we can say that the 10 second is divided into 10 segment which gives us one second part segment so we had 10 requests so those 10 requests can be used by one of the segment or all of them but the way it works is if you have 10 requests then based on how many requests you used in that segment the rest of the request will go into the next segment. So I created this Excel to explain how it works. So for example, let's say we have a total time of 60 seconds, which is the window for the rate limiter that we have. And then we have total 100 requests per limit. We have decided that we are going to break this into two segments. So 0 to 30 is one and 30 to 60 is another one. So at the 0th second, we had 100 requests. Now, if we make 20 requests within 0 to 30 seconds, the carryover number of requests to the next segment, which is 30 to 60, is going to be 80. So now the available will be 80. And if we make 40 requests, 40 will be carry over to the next segment. But in our case, we had only 0 to 60, so the 40 will be unused. This explains how the carryover works within a sliding window between multiple segments for a particular window. To demonstrate this, we can first add the rate limiter into the dependency injection container. And just like all other rate limiter we described in previous videos, we're going to use the same thing. So we'll use the add rate limiter. And add rate limiter comes with options which is a delegate. And this is what we are going to use to set different rate limiting options. So in our case, we are going to use option dot global rate limiter. And here we are going to use partition rate limiter dot create. And for the create, just like the last couple of videos, I am going to use HTTP, HTTP context as my fast key, which will be used to identify how do we deal with the key. And then for the key itself, we are going to use a string. And then next, again, we are going to get the context, which is nothing but the HTTP context. And for the context, here we can use rate limit partition dot get sliding window limiter. That is what we are going to use right now because we are going to implement sliding window. So we'll use sliding window limiter. And for sliding window limiter, just like the other limiters will create a partition. And in our case, just like the previous examples, I'm going to use the host header as the partition key. 
Now the partition key, as I mentioned in my last video also, can be anything. It can be an account number which is available in the HTTP context or a user ID, anything that you want to partition the number of requests by. So in our case, we are using the host from where the call is coming. So we can see context.request.headers.host dot to string so that's our key and then for factory which is a delegate we can use here new sliding window rate limiter options and for the options as i mentioned for the par limit this is the number of requests that is allowed for the entire window and here for this example, I'm just going to set it as two. And then for segment par window, which is the number of segment that the window is going to divide it into, I'm going to set it as two. And for window itself, I'm going to use time span dot from second one. So we are using a window of only one second. And this window will be broken into two segments. So it's going to be 500 millisecond each. And then the two request, which is available for a second, can be used on either of the partition. If it is not used in the first, it will be slided to the next. So this is how we are going to add. And then here, I'm going to add the middleware and for that I'll use app dot use rate limiter. So now we are ready to test the sliding window rate limiter option. And at this point in time, if we try it out, we are going to see that if we continue to hit it fast, we are going to hit the error of 503. Now it's because we have not given what kind of error it should return. Ideally, it should be returning 429. So for that, we can do option dot rejection status code is equal to status code dot 429, too many requests. So if we set this out, now it's going to return a 429. So we can demonstrate that quickly. And then I'm going to show the callback implementation. So now if we try out, and as I said, if we try, we have to try fast enough. So you can see 529. If I continue trying at a lower pace, it's going to go and move to the next segment of the one second. So each 500 millisecond will have two requests. Whereas if I do fast enough, then I'm going to hit the too many request. Now, the next thing I'm going to show is the callback. And for that, we can do option dot. And here on rejected is the callback. And as you can see, it's a Lambda function which takes the on rejected context and the cancellation token and returns a value task. So here we can say this equal to context. And here, first thing we're going to do is return uh, value task dot completed task. And here we can do a console dot write line and I can do context dot request HTTP context dot request dot and here we can go what method has been called the path and get any item out of the header or body. So we can do a lot of thing here. And this is going to be very useful for certain scenarios. For example, if a rate limit is happening too many times, you might want to send a notification to the client about their usage pattern. So this callback can be tied to a logic where it can maintain a state of how many times for a client you get a 429 and based on that send an email notification or something like that and those can be done asynchronously through another microservice 
this one can send data to a queue and so on and so forth. So for our example, I'm just going to print out the path of the request and let's run this application now. And once the application is up, I'm going to execute a few times to get the error. And then if I open the console window, you can see that the API endpoint for the call is showing up as a part of the console.write line. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.